I've been thinking a lot lately about what kind of videos I want to make. YouTube's pretty new to me. I'm still figuring my way out. And I think I might do one called 10 Dumb Things I've Purchased because there's a long list of them. But today, I'll just share one thing. One thing I shouldn't have purchased that I did that was ridiculous. There's a joke I do in one of my speeches about this. It's really about how bad people are at figuring out the right size of their goals. It's a true point. There's a ton of research about how bad people are at overestimating what they can get done. A lot of times it happens from what's called planning fallacy, which is this belief that you can get more done in less time. I kind of think about it like the airport estimate. When you ask somebody how long it takes to get to the airport, they tell you the best time it's ever taken them, as if that's the standard. But I've got this joke I do to illustrate the point of how bad we are at estimating the size of our goals. I tell this story. I say, people will come up to me and say, John, I'm going to get into running. And I'll go, that's great. And they'll go, yeah, I'm going to run a marathon. And I'll go, whoa, have you ever run a half marathon or a 10K or a 5K? Even just a K. Get a tiny little medal. And they go, no, I heard an Eminem song. Mom's, Mom's spaghetti. spaghetti. I'm, whoa. I'm going for it. I gotta lose myself. I'm gonna get a carbon fiber bike, wear tight clothing, so much information. I'm gonna run the Ironman this weekend. I'm going to Kona. And I go, whoa, whoa, I don't, I don't know if that's gonna actually be sustainable. That's part of the reason so many goals fail is we have the wrong size. But I realized something recently. I'm also the person in that story, the person that's overestimating. It took me a long time to understand that, but it's true. I think that's why people say, like, most advice is autobiographical. Most things you tell somebody else, most advice you write about, most advice you share is really about yourself. We're really talking to ourselves when we share a lot of advice. And so I didn't know that I was hidden inside that joke. For example, three years ago, I bought an expensive road bike. So a cycle, a bicycle, if you will, because I thought, you know what? I might, I might be a cyclist. It's really popular in our town. People do it all over the place. And I, I started to believe maybe I'm going to do that too. And I'd say things like, you know, it's just better for the old knees. I'd rub them when I'd say, I'd go, oh, the old knees, you know, at this point, at this age, these old girls. And I asked for the most ridiculous, tight, reflective clothing for Christmas. My poor wife bought me these outfits that look like Tron. They're, they're in my closet right now. I purchased new pedals and bags and water bottles and accessory on accessory on accessory. I think that was my favorite thing about cycling is that there's a never ending chance to shop for small accessories and you want them to be made of carbon. I mean, you're trying to cut weight. I then rode the bike for about mm, 500 miles, and then I hung it up right on the wall in my garage, right there on the garage for eight straight months. Let me repeat that. I didn't touch that bike. I didn't ride that bike for eight straight months. Every day during that period, I'd walk out to my car and it would just shame me from the wall. It would just kind of leer down on me and be like, for what happened to us? I thought we were going to be serious. I mean, you got all the tight clothing. Like, come on, what are you doing? You should be ride more often. What a waste of money. Who does that? Who invests like that and then never uses it? Right now, some of you are nodding along because there's a Peloton or Peloton. Peloton. I don't know if you're supposed to pronounce the O, but Peloton. Peloton. There's a Peloton, Peloton. in your garage right now that's just the world's most expensive place to dry laundry and you're like oh he's he's right i do have the peloton peloton that's fun to say and you know what that's like and i, I learned something i learned that i don't need to buy a bike i don't need to own a bike i'm not a biker and eventually i got tired of pretending i was a cyclist i just felt like i was posing and so i brought the bike back to the store i returned to our local store and said hey turns out i'm not a cyclist um, I purchased this bike here and I traded it in for a mountain bike that I can kind of ride around the neighborhood with our kids. I mean, I would take my expensive bike down to the neighborhood pool and then I would put it right by where we were sitting. And it wasn't easy. I would have to go through a big field and it'd sit right here because like anyone could steal this at any moment. I was vigilant for that bike. I was very serious about that bike, but I got a new one. I traded it in and I learned a few things 
during that experience. A few things about me that I think might actually be helpful for you too. Number one, when you're gonna start something new, regardless of the type of goal it is, buy the cheap version if you want to experiment. Buy the cheap version. I have this habit, and it's not a good habit, but I have this habit of buying the expert level item when I'm starting something brand new. Like I go from never having done it to I better see how much this water bottle weighs because I don't want it to cut down. I want to figure out drag. Like, do I need to shave my legs? I mean, the truth is I didn't need a carbon fiber bicycle to see if I liked the sport. I didn't, I didn't even really need to buy one at all. I mean, if you think about it, I could have borrowed one from a bunch of my friends. There's bikes in this neighborhood. Our next door app, which I'm no longer on because it makes me super angry. But I know that people sell bikes all the time. I could have borrowed one. Borrow one from a friend to test it out. Don't buy a paddle board, for instance. Borrow a paddle board. Although, I will never understand that sport, the appeal. It's like you stripped all the fun parts out of surfing, this is surfing, surfing, wakeboarding, and skimboarding, and snowboarding. Like you removed everything fun and like, ah, like all the exhilarating parts, and then you made a board the size of a Honda Civic that's impossible to easily transport. Like really, really huge board, not a lot going on when you get there. I know, I know, it's, it's peaceful, John. It's peaceful, it's relaxing. It's like, uh, it's like the cat of water sports. That's what paddle boarding is. It's the cat of water sports. You have to earn its affection. Sure, I'm sure that's how it is. Borrow it, don't buy it. Number two, Trust what the data is trying to tell you. Trust the data. I wrote a whole chapter on data and the importance of data in my book, Finish, about why we need to understand the data in our own lives, especially when it comes to the goals we have. Why? Because data kills denial, which prevents disaster. Ooh, that sentence. Data kills denial, which prevents disaster. I had data about my bike. I could easily see on my Strava app, I have this app, Strava, that I use, that I hadn't ridden the bike in eight months. I'd also run a bunch, so maybe I should run more and get rid of the bike. I had 32 weeks of evidence that I just wasn't into riding. Why did I pretend that the data wasn't telling me a very clear story? Data will give you an honest story because it's just data. So listen to the data. Three. Give things the old college try, but change them when it's time to change them. People love to say, you know, quitters never win. Quitters never win, but that's, that's just not true. It, it's really not. It's fun to say, but it's not true. You should 100% quit. Things you don't really like doing that aren't renewing you, that are expensive. I mean, that's a bad, like the Venn diagram of those three things is terrible. You don't like it, it doesn't feel good, it doesn't renew you, and it's expensive. You should drop those as fast as you can. I owned that bike for two years. Two years, 24 months. That was a long enough data set for me. I didn't, I didn't get rid of it after the first month. I wasn't impulsive. I was impulsive when I purchased it. I think we can all agree there. But I wasn't impulsive when I got rid of it. I could have probably gotten rid of it a year earlier too, if I had paid attention. If I had said, you know what? I don't think I really like this. If I had been aware of what was going on, if I had listened to the data. If you're not getting the results you want for any type of goal in your life right now, as you look at your life, just be honest. Make sure that you've put in real effort for a real result. But if you have a data set that says it's not working, it's not going to work, make a change. Make quick changes. Cut it out of your life so that the things that you do like, the things that are going to help you, the things that are going to renew you actually have more space. Now, to be honest with you, I don't really miss my bike. I don't. I think about it every now and then, but I've got the mountain bike and I'm barely riding that. It just turns out I'm not a cyclist. If you are awesome, ride a million miles. I love that. If you're into paddle boards, awesome. Do that too. Just keep doing the things that fit your goals and make sure you get rid of the things. Get rid of all the things 
that aren't helping you in your life, as you build the kind of life you want, be really deliberate about getting rid of things that aren't. Experiment with new things. Do a million experiments. Mix it up when it's time to mix it up. I think that could be good. I think that can be healthy. I'm glad I tried cycling. And if you want, you can bring the bike back. You get to say, you know what? This isn't for me. This activity, this situation is not for me. You get to decide it's not for you. You get to make that choice, just like I got to make that choice too. Thank you so much for watching these videos. As always, hit that bell. Please hit like, and thanks for subscribing so you don't miss another one. I'll keep making these as long as you keep watching them.